So you've built a beautiful subwoofer box. It's good and strong with plenty of bracing and the seams are nice and precise so that you don't have to worry about any air leaking. You're ready to install the subwoofer, so now we need to somehow run the speaker wire from the amplifier through the box wall and to the subwoofer. But how do we do this properly in order to avoid any of the common mistakes? That's coming up. Welcome to Car Audio Fabrication, the show where together we learn how to master car audio and how to design, build, and install our ideal car audio system. Today is Fabrication Friday. This is something new that I've started to help you guys with answering some of your questions. To participate in this goodness, take your face on over to facebook.com slash car audio fabrication and post up a question, you awesome person you. Last week, Jesse asked this. How do you install wire terminals in a subwoofer box so that the box stays sealed well? Great question. Question, Jesse, I'll definitely answer that, but let's also talk about how we can properly run the wire all the way through the box and a couple of other techniques. In this video, I want to discuss three things that we need to account for when doing this process. One of the first things we need to do is make the speaker wire as short as possible. This is one of the reasons I never really show it in any of the box building videos, because I'm always waiting until I actually install the subwoofer box into the vehicle. I don't choose a location for the hole until I know exactly where the amplifiers are going to be mounted in the vehicle and exactly where the subwoofer box is going to be mounted in the vehicle. In fact, there's times that this has saved me because waiting until the end of the install to determine where the hole is, it's oftentimes a little bit different than I thought that it would originally be going. The second thing that's very important, and this is more what your question pertains to, is making sure that we seal the wiring that is in fact going through that wall into the subwoofer box. Let's say we built a sealed box. If we took meticulous care to make sure that every single seam was absolutely perfect and perfectly sealed, we don't want air to leak out the hole that we put the wire through. Additionally, even in a ported box, we want to make sure that the air is only going in and out of the port and nowhere else. So the main goal here is however we have that wire going through the box, we don't want any air to leak. But there's something else that I think is really important as well. We often put a lot of effort into bracing the inside of the box and even using a double baffle on the front face in order to make the box as strong as possible so that we don't lose any acoustic output. So when you make a box as strong as possible, I really disagree with the idea of adding a terminal cup. For those of you that don't know, a terminal cup is basically a cup made of plastic that you attach to the side of the box and it has two wire terminals. The wiring then allows the conductor to go from the outside of the box to the inside. The problem with these terminal cups though is they're often made with very thin, flimsy plastic. If I spent so much effort making this box as strong as possible, I really don't want to add a weak point. For this reason, there's two methods that I will recommend using for running a wire into the box. The first is drilling a hole that is slightly smaller than the size of the wire so that you really have to force the wire through and then sealing it with caulk. The second method is using these binding post style connections. Link in the description to some of my favorites. Really quick, I wanna say thank you to some of the new guys that have signed up over on Patreon. Thomas, Carlos, Denley, Robert, and Steven. Thanks to you guys, I was actually able to pick up these binding posts so that I could make this video and I was also able to get some of the other materials that I've been using in some of the other videos. Now how do we actually use these binding post style connections? For binding post style connections, you start with drilling a small hole. In fact, the hole is small enough that you literally have to thread the binding post through the hole. With threading it in this method, you know that it's good and sealed. In both of these cases, you are in fact making a hole in the box, but it's not so large that you're really sacrificing any strength and you don't have to be worried about that plastic vibration. Now, if you still think you should absolutely use a speaker terminal connector, just make sure that you use speaker gasketing tape around it or a healthy amount of caulk on the backside. Also, I wanna point out that you should always allow plenty of time for the caulk to cure within the box. If you install the subwoofer too soon, some of the fumes can actually hurt the adhesives on the subwoofer itself and can damage the subwoofer. Now, the third thing that we need to address is once the wire is in the box, how do we actually manage that wire? Wire while it's connecting to the subwoofer. The most common thing we see is that the wire is just simply dangled inside the box heading over to the subwoofer. Of course this works, but the problem is there's potential for that wire to actually bounce against the side of the box. This might be something that you're familiar with when you hear a rattling inside of the box. To better run the wire to the subwoofer, I recommend that you use these. 
Again, the link is down in the video description. Now what I'll do before securing the wire is lay down a strip of closed cell foam. I then use flange head wood screws in order to secure the wire using the connector through the foam into the wood. This results in a wire that no longer makes a rattling noise. Now I hope that this helped answer your question, Jesse, and I hope that this helps a bunch of you guys out there for some of your future builds. Now I'm making an attempt to make one of these videos every Friday, but in order to do so, I need your help. Let me know some of your questions down below in the comments, or like I said earlier, head on over to Facebook at facebook.com slash car audio fabrication. Thank you again for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, if you could take a quick Pico second and just smash that like button. And also if you could help support the making of educational content and share this with your friends that might like bass or your dad or your grandma or your sister or your mom or your uncle or your uncle's second cousin or your, I would love to grow our community and continue to help each other build car audio. A special thanks goes out to Ivor, Emmanuel, Rory, Eddie, Richard, Mark, Truman, Jerry, and all the other Patreon supporters. These guys really help make these videos possible by helping me offset the cost of producing this content. If you'd like to learn more about how you can help, check out the link to Patreon down below. And if you'd like to join the free email list where I send you guys weekly tips, check that out below as well. Thank you guys again for watching.